So, part one of my Pedagogy of the Oppressed by Paulo Freire series. I'm going to start out with a Bible verse. The book of James, chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries which are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted, and your garments have become moth-eaten. Behold, the pay of the laborers who mowed your fields and with you have withheld cries out against you, and the outcry of the harvesters has reached the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. You have lived luxuriously on the earth and led a life of wanton pleasure. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. Come now, you reach, whip, weep, and howl for your miseries which are coming upon you. So the American system is fucked. Plutocracy, it's run by a few rich folks, and we know what they want. They want more for themselves, and they want less for everybody else. Uh, they want the people to be just smart enough to run the machines and be able to fill out all the paperwork, but obedient enough to accept all the shitty conditions. What they don't want is for the people to be educated and to be able to think for themselves, to think critically, because if the people actually thought for themselves and critically, they would see that the system has been fucking them uh, for centuries, ever since the dawn of mankind. Right now, America... More especially Kentucky. The banks destroy our economy. The media destroys information. Doctors destroy health. Lawyers destroy justice. Psychiatrists destroy minds. Scientists destroy the truth. Schools destroy education. Universities destroy knowledge. Governments destroy freedom. Business destroys work. Families destroy love. For pornography destroys sex. And religion destroys morality. All of world history is characterized by the master-slave relationship. It's the rich versus the poor. It's the oppressor versus the oppressed. And to wash one's hand of the conflict between the powerful and the powerless means to side with the powerful, not to be neutral, as Desmond Tutu. And Howard Zinn, you can't be neutral on a moving train. Since there's plenty of sell-out assholes, professional corruptionists, who have no consciousness or a moral core or a set of principles that they live by, who can't wait to take the old guard's power to oppress, exploit, and dominate since power is perpetual, like the soulless, never-ending corporation. That's why the revolution needs to be perpetual and perennial, daily. Every breath of air, every thought should be revolutionary, just to be free is an act of rebellion. The goal is to first get free and then to destroy the oppressor class and to liberate everyone else. And it's legal here in Kentucky. Section 4 of Kentucky's Constitution legitimates revolution. Section 4 of Kentucky's Constitution reads, All powers inherit in the people, and all free governments are founded on their authority and instituted for their peace, safety, happiness, and the protection of property. For the advancement of these ends, they have at all times an inalienable and indefensible, indefeasible right to alter, reform, or abolish their government in such manner as they may deem proper or by any means necessary. Revolution can transform a concrete situation of oppression by establishing the process of liberation. One must confront this phenomenon. Many times the oppressed, a conditioned, who are conditioned by the oppressor, wants to turn the revolution into their own private revolution. Freedom is the indispensable condition for the quest of human completion. Freedom is essential for life. It is necessary, but it's not a sufficient condition for the quest of human completion. So freedom is just one component. So again, freedom is the ins indispensable condition for the quest of human completion. So we know how fucking shitty the oppressor is. We understand that. What we don't understand is what it is that we can do in order to liberate ourselves. So uh, that's part one, and I'm going to see how that looks and get some other things lined up, and there should be more coming shortly. Uh, you're going to learn about how fucking shitty the oppressor is. The oppressors, they are fucking shitty. Every serial killer is an oppressor, but not every oppressor is a serial killer. More to come.